for its female star, was lucky enough to have one of the loveliest and most uh, attractive and talented ladies to come from Broadway to films in the early 40s. She uh, refuses to believe that much time has gone by since then, and I don't either, because I was enjoying uh, Tree Grows in Brooklyn and Claudia and the Gentleman's Agreement. And then in 1957, she began to play somewhat more mature roles, and she is our guest, Miss Dorothy McGuire. Welcome. Thank you, Tom. So nice to have you with us. And, of course, I've mentioned that you did three movies, and we'll talk about the other two, but I think perhaps we could talk about your guest as yes. well. Would you tell us whom you brought along uh, today? I brought along Marco Polo because I felt that uh, Old Yeller sent him to me. Um, um, several of my other dogs had passed, and my daughter, Topo Swope, who's very, uh, Garrett, who's very uh, involved with the Amanda Foundation, uh, suggested I go down and get a dog. And I met and fe fe fell in love with Marco Polo. Well, he certainly is photogenic, as you yes. can see from the, uh, from the see monitor there. Can he may see? be the star of the next Disney movie, if anybody from out there is smart enough to be yeah. watching. Yeah. Really, and, and of course, yeah, the know. amazing thing is he does look a great deal like uh, Old Yeller in our movie. Well, same um, smile, I think. The same smile. Yeah. And also, he's, uh, he's very protective. And, um, well, he has that magic. Well, we'll talk about the Amanda Foundation and a lot of things, yes. and about your career, too. I wasn't just uh, making up an introduction as I went along, Dorothy, and I'm so thrilled to have you here because I have truly enjoyed you ever since your very first movie, Claudia. And I know that a great many of our viewers, particularly these days, since on cable, so many of those wonderful old movies are seen. Yes. And uh, Bob Dorian, who does them on the American Movie Classics, uh, kind of does what I do, except he doesn't have to have commercials, and we do. That's <laughs> pays the bills. But uh, I, I hope that you won't mind if we talk about both careers now and then. Is that all right with you? That's all right. Excellent. Now, you had never done a Disney movie before in 57. Had you met Walt Disney before? No, I had not. Um, I met him uh, when we were filming. Uh -huh. I did three. I did Old Yeller, Swiss Family, and uh, Swiss Family Robinson, right. I should say. And uh, Summer, Summer Magic. Summer right. Magic, yes. With but uh, did, he would, did he come on the set, or were you just... No, I was taken to his office uh -huh. and introduced to him, and he was a very comfortable human being. And as, as we all know, he was way ahead of his time and uh, just had that understanding for his fellow human beings. And about that time, he was a very busy fellow because Disneyland was just happening as well. Right. All right, well, let's go back to 1957. You who watch our show regularly remember that we had Fess Parker on uh, the last time we showed it. And much to uh, my chagrin, I haven't seen Old Yeller in such a long time, uh, I'd forgotten that, <laughs> that Fess comes and goes. He's in the first five minutes and the last five minutes. But in the rest of it, we have Tommy Kirk, and we have Kevin Corcoran, and we have Beverly Washburn, and Chuck Connors, and Jeff York, and a great-looking dog, and a wonderful lady who is our leading lady and our guest today. So, without further ado, as they say on smart television shows, it's time to watch Old Yeller. Our movie, in case you join us latest, Old Yeller, but our guest is not Old Yeller. This is old or young Marco Polo. We're not quite <laughs> sure of his age because he was acquired from the Ar Amanda Foundation by our real guest, Miss Dorothy McGuire, the star, the female star of Old Yeller. Dorothy, uh, as we were driving to the studio today, I asked you to write down a couple of names about people that you might like to be inquired uh, about. Yeah. And you wrote uh, Robert Stevenson and... Uh, Rudy Weatherwax. Maybe I should ask you about Mr. Stevenson first. Oh, Robert Stevenson. The director. Of yes, was our director, and uh, he had a splendid reputation in Hollywood, and we were very lucky to have. He was. Um, he insisted that we have a real relationship between the actors. You see, and of course that was Tommy Kirk and uh, Kevin Corcoran, right? And uh, Fess Parker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and he insisted on realism, naturalness, and uh, that came easily for And of course, us. when you were shooting the movie, and of course it's no secret because everybody knows how movies are made, now it used to be sort of a secret, but a lot of the reactions you do had to be to things that you weren't actually seeing at the moment, That's which right. were put in later. That's right. And we were on location, and uh, out of sequence, I don't know whether audiences understand about that, but they may think that the, the, the story is filmed from beginning to end, and that's not the way it is. You no. go with the location and the weather. 
Oh, and speaking of weather, I have to tell you about famous Mr. Weatherwax. Yes, Rudy Weatherwax. That's right. Uh -huh. He was the, he found Spike, which was the real name of the dog. Oh, uh, well, the other's name was yeah, Spike. Yes, and uh, as I understand it, he found him uh, in a shelter and rescued him, and uh, because he, he was intrigued by how he looked and uh, something about his intelligence. And, of course, as we have found out and discovered, animals are intelligent. Well, we, just saw, the, we are. just saw the scene, too, with a very intelligent cow named Rose, who uh, uh, Old Yeller uh, aided Tommy Kirk in uh, milking. Uh, those people who uh, actually work with uh, animals on the set are called wranglers, I believe. Yes. So I presume Rose had her own wrangler, but Rudy Weatherwax was in charge of Old Yeller. Yes. Um, all right, we're, we're, we've met, uh, let's see, we've met uh, Jeff York, the gruff uh, father of little Beverly Washburn. In fact, you and Beverly Washburn are the only ladies in the whole movie. And we're about to meet Chuck Connors, who uh, is, does a very nice job in our film as well. So, back shall we get to uh, Old Yeller. And we're going to talk about Dorothy McGuire at Fox and other studios, too. Also, Friendly Persuasion, which was made just before ours. But now back to Old Yeller. Our movie is Old Yeller, and our guest Dorothy McGuire has just led uh, the litter away, bearing uh, Old Yeller, who's been scratched up a bit, and young Arliss is uh, attending to him, and Travis is on the mule. He, Travis is in such great shape either. Dorothy, um, your career at, at the Disney Studios, which began in 57, followed by about 15 years, one of the lovely stories of Broadway to Hollywood, uh, when you were discovered by David O. Selznick and brought to be in Claudia, but he didn't make the movie. No, that's quite certain. That's quite true. Um, my contract was uh, split between 20th Century Fox and RKO. And this uh, movie, uh, we're going to show a still from Claudia now, shows you with Robert uh, Young of uh, yeah, Father Knows Best and exactly. uh, Dr. Um, Welby, for those who came along later. Yes, yes. Had you worked with him before? No, I'd never had. Uh, I did Claudia on Broadway, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that part was played by Donald Cook, who was also in film, had been in film. Right. And the mother was Frances Starr, and in film it was played by Ina Clare, who was very famous. And then you were then at Fox, and uh, they at were lucky enough to have you, and they put you then into this picture, which was A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Betty Smith had a big bestseller about 1943. Yes, indeed. That, was, that still is a classic. And that's uh, in the middle is Aunt Sissy. That's uh, uh, Joan Blondell. Yeah. And then the two kids, that's Peggy Ann Garner on the left, and little Teddy Donaldson up on the right. Oh, you are Well, I've been, I've been rehearsing, and of course you were there, so you know, but I just have to show you how smart I am. Yes. Uh, your contract was actually at two studios. Then. Yes. That... Well, I, I don't know. I, it, it's possible that David had my contract, uh -huh. but it was split between the two studios. I can't tell you about the financial. That's all right. I don't need to know that. In fact, I think Gregory Peck, when we had him on with 12 O'Clock High, told him that he was working for several That's studios right. at once, too. Yes. Then this is the one that everybody remembers because it was the first movie about uh, racial prejudice, and they could actually say that Jewish people were being uh, discriminated against, Gentlemen's Agreement. Tell me about working on that. Would you have me happy memories of working on that? Very, yes. Uh, well, Greg and I came from the theater about the same time, That's right. though I didn't know him before I came out here, uh -huh. but he also was under contract to David. And um, Elia Kazan, who is one of the most talented uh, directors, was a director. He had directed Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Which was his first. Yes, mm -hmm. that was his first. And a very famous, famous cameraman named Leon Shamroy uh, was the director who uh, was actually he was on both films, I believe, and he guided Kazan uh, in the making of a Tree. That was Kazan's first picture, and he he that's how he learned the process of filmmaking, Kazan. But uh, story-wise, um, we were all comfortable with each other, and story-wise, it was a I guess a trendsetter. It certainly was, and um, broke new ground. And uh, I remember we did a one day's filming in Connecticut. I can't remember whose famous house it was. And uh, 20th flew us all east for one day's filming in, in, in this rather uh, elegant house. I can't remember the scene or anything about it, but I do remember that uh, um, Gregory was interviewed and they asked him what the picture was about. And uh, he told them that it was about anti-Semitism and prejudice, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, in the next day in the paper, it said, the picture is about real estate. 
Oh, for heaven's sake, is that amazing? Oh. Well, well, it was about uh, uh, Jewish people sure. moving into a... But they didn't mention the racial business about that. Uh, well, of course, those times, thank heaven, have certainly changed in yes. 40 years. Yes. And then, of course, you and Gregory Peck and uh, some other folks were involved with the La Jolla Playhouse, which yes. is still in its new guise going so beautifully. Yes. All right, well, we've got to get back to 1957, but okay. I'm having such a good time at Fox. In the, in the early 40s, it's hard to get back. We will, however, talk later about Friendly Persuasion, which was done for William Wyler and, uh, and uh, Samuel Goldwyn, I believe. Right. Anyway, now back to uh, 1957, Old Yeller, and more from Walt Disney. This is KTLA, Channel 5, Tribune Broadcasting in Los Angeles. Our movie for a happy Sunday afternoon is Old Yeller, but this still, featuring our guest, Dorothy McGuire, is from the movie she made previous, just immediately before our movie, Friendly Persuasion. And Dorothy, you always worked with such tall people. I mean, this is Anthony Perkins, who played your son, for heaven's sake, and even he is tall. Then you had Gary Cooper, and you had Gregory Peck, and Fess Parker in our movie. I was lucky. Yes, I guess you were at that. Now, uh, the, the uh, Friendly Persuasion, which we have shown on this stage as well and, and loved a great deal, did lead, they say, to, to your playing mothers and more mature ladies. Do you, um, and, I, and uh, uh, people who go to the Amundsen and people who uh, go to the theater at all have seen you uh, recently, do you prefer one medium over another? They always ask that of movie stars, so why don't yes, I ask you? Yes, they ask that. Actually, they're very different. Um, I love theater because you get an immediate reaction from your audience and they feed into you energy and you are, you know, thinking and feeling and telling a story to them. So, yes, I like that very much indeed. Film, on the other hand, uh, can almost get inside a person in, into, if, if the person is really prepared, into the thinking and into the feeling. When you're in the theater, of course, you have a distance between you and the audience. But when you're in, on film, uh, if the story is good, um, the camera can be, you know, right inside of you. Now, you have a television film coming up, which I presume will uh, contain some of those qualities, with uh, George Grizzard and Patricia Neal and Stephanie Zimbalist. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, it's a Hallmark production, and it may... I'm not sure when it's going to be shown. It, it could be March or April. Mm -hmm. And it stars Stephanie Zimbalist, and it's called Caroline with a question mark. And, uh, so it, and, and Dorothea Petrie is the producer, and Joe Sargent is the director. Good. It was filmed in Atlanta, and uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting story. We'll look for it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back now, because uh, as you can see, it's getting very, very dicey with the hydrophobia and Old Yeller, and what's going to happen, and will the boys be able to, well, you watch, and uh, if you want to snivel up a little bit, that's all right, too. We may be doing that here. Back now to Old Yeller. There's the gun dog in the west. Well, it would make a wonderful Hollywood story if I could tell you that this is the actual dog that was in little uh, Kevin Corcoran's arms, but it's not true. Actually, it's uh, Marco Polo, and if you want to know Dorothy McGuire's home phone number, it's right there <laughs> on the label. So if you see Marco Polo running along, which you won't, Dorothy, I can't thank you enough oh, for coming down. what a pleasure it's been. I've so Enjoy wanted to you meet so you, much. and I know our viewers have, absolutely. Thank you. Bless Beautiful. your heart, and thank, thank you for coming. You. We love the movie, and we love having you with us, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep star in the five-time Oscar winner Kramer vs. Kramer, a KTLA premiere, Thursday at 8 on Channel 5.